We are starting off with our top focus on how the dodo could be making a comeback. Dead as dodo, they say. Well, that's not really true. Uh, we are now telling you about how the extinct bird might be making a comeback. I'm not talking about science fiction flicks like Jurassic Park. But now, fiction is all set to replay, become a reality, it seems. The bird that was last seen in the 17th century could once again be hopping and jumping. A company named Colossal Biosciences is planning to bring back the species that have been extinct for a long time. It will be brought back to at least a semblance of life. Gene editing techniques now exist that allow scientists uh, to mine the dodo genome for key traits that they believe can then be effectively reassembled within a body of a living relative. Dodos are most closely related to pigeons according to sequencing of the dead bird's genome. The scientists in question said their work beyond providing an insight into the extinct dodo's existence could help inform the conservation of rare species that are not yet extinct. I'll inform about the same. As according to the IUCN, more than 42,100 species are threatened with extinction. However, there is a fierce debate among biologists over whether this sort of research should be pursued. Colossal Biosciences, the gene editing company involved, has already embarked on projects to revive the woolly mammoths. But the dodo would be its first bird, which is significant as it means changing the gene editing techniques in order to accommodate an external egg. Moreover, this could bypass at least some of the ethical dilemmas for the scientists. With the mammalian species, the technique requires implanting gene editing materials into the reproductive system of an existing relative of the species, such as an elephant in the case of the mammoth. It could take many pregnancies in practice to create viable offsprings from such a method. Performing the same technique on an egg-laying bird should be less stressful for the donor species. The researchers essentially will be able to work with the pigeon eggs and use genetic material from the pigeons that can be modified to reflect key traits of the dodo, including its flightlessness. But this will also be technically challenging as no one has so far managed to use gene editing for birds in this way. And for more on this, joining me on the broadcast is Ronaldo Jose Lopes from Sao Paulo, Brazil. He is a science journalist. Thanks very much for being here. Let me ask you now for your reaction to what this gene editing company hopes to do, uh, bringing back the dodo from extinction. Uh, what do you make of uh, these reports and the initiative that uh, is being uh, looked at? Hello, thanks for having me. Good morning from Brazil. I think there are so much questions up in the air so far, and it's really, really hard to 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 be sure what's what's going to be done. I think um, one of the major questions is what kind of pigeon are they going to use as a platform to to uh, try to bring back the dodo? There are, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of, of pigeon species. Uh, ideally, you should work with the closest relative to the to the dodo to try to do this kind of stuff. And I'm not sure that even these living uh, close relatives are endangered themselves. So that, that's that's one point that, that you you have to take into account. Uh, also, uh, to actually bring uh, an entire species back from the dead, to, to to bring it back like it was before, uh, you, sh you you would you would need to to modify probably thousands of genes at the same time, uh, and nobody has done that. Ever uh, in any kind of platform, even in uh, I guess in, in 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 cell cultures, this is not the kind of stuff that you can do without modifying undesired genes, genes that you uh, you, you didn't need to modify with a lot of unforeseen effects. So, uh, if I were uh, even the, the, the people from Colossal Biosciences, I wouldn't be holding my breath. That would be a perfect uh, uh, new dodo uh, coming up. What I what I think is more probable is that they're going to to produce some kind of dodonized, if that's a word, pigeon, uh, modifying some genes that uh, are present in the dodo uh, that will make it look look make make it look like 
uh, Adodo in some sense, in some traits, but not just uh, simply uh, creating a rebirth of the species. Right. And uh, talking about this very technology, uh, which could perhaps also see improvement in the next few decades, uh, we can possibly be optimistic and talk about how other extinct animals could also be brought back. Uh, well, there, there's a lot of people talking about the woolly mammoth, which is always, uh, you know, uh, one of the main candidates for, for this kind of stuff. Uh, uh, I think the, the same company is talking about the, the thylacine, which is a marsupial, the, the famous uh, uh, marsupial lion or marsup marsupial wolf from, from Austra Australia. And, and, well, there are a lot of species. I think it, it's going to depend very much uh, on, again, on the proximity of the extinct species to, to, to species that, is, that are still around. Uh, today, that 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 has uh, a lot to do with the kind of of the amount of the technical challenge of how much, like I said, how much genes you you need to to intervene with to to have a a, a good result. And of course, uh, when you're talking about mammals, like like you mentioned before, uh, in the kind of surrogate mothers that it can use, it's not it's not in the case of the woolly mammoth, for example. Uh, where are you going to find? Uh, lots of Asian uh, elephant females to be surrogate mothers, uh, which is themselves are part of, of an endangered species, even in, in, in India, right? So, uh, and is it ethically, and it's something that we can, can discuss further, is it, is it ethical to, to endanger the lives of these females uh, just, just to, to, to turn them into surrogate mothers? So I think uh, there's still a lot of open questions. Uh, I'm not saying that it's that it's impossible to be done. Uh, I think uh, science is, is always pushing the envelope in terms of what, what, what is possible and what is not. But uh, it's certainly not trivial. And, it, uh, and it's, I, I think we should be talking about uh, decades and, and not years before anything is, is accomplished in, in that field uh, with a clear, uh, clear cut result. All right, we're leaving it there for the moment, but thanks very much for joining us on the broadcast and sharing all those perspectives. We are now available in your country. Download the app now, get all the news on the move.